and we're looking at the top of our ceiling, which isn't very impressive. So I'm going to change my viewport shading down here, right beside object mode. I'm going to change that to wireframe so I can actually see inside of here. So this is the top view of my room. And now if I'm placing things straight down, I can tell how much distance is in between these. So I'm not placing this coffee table inside of the couch or something like that. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to go and click, uh, say about right in here somewhere, a little ways off the couch, uh, maybe right in line with this little, little yellow line, which is actually the light coming off of the window. So I'm going to put it off, about right in here somewhere. And I'm going to go ahead and add a cube. So I'm going to go to add up here at the top, mesh, and I'm going to add a cube. It's going to put it right there where my 3D cursor was. Now I'm going to use the new uh, properties panel here to show you how much fun this stuff is. So if you don't have this, this bar visible over here, you can hit the N key that toggles this panel. Uh, up in the transform, very, very first one gives you uh, all of the location, rotation, and scale information for this guy, and also gives you an actual readout. Uh, these are generic blender units, so that's not two feet. That's actually the equivalent of two meters. So um, I actually haven't set this up for feet and inches yet. But you can just manipulate these guys here, either through scale, uh, and you see that this will happen in real time if I change any of these values here. Uh, I'm going to switch this guy down a little bit more. Um, you can also use the scale tool if you want to. Just grab this handle that squishes it this way and drag it closer together and squish it down. And once you're satisfied with the, how this looks in this view, uh, what we're going to do is to go into the front view because we haven't dealt with that dimension. Uh, this is basically the width and, and length, but we don't we haven't messed with the height yet, so we don't actually even know where this thing's sitting uh, in 3D space. <coughs> so I'm going to change to a different view of my world here. Uh, I'm going to get the one key, which is going to go to my front view, or I can go to view and say front down here. That's going to jump to the front view. You see, wow, I have my coffee table going below my floor here. It's really, really tall. So I'm going to have to go over here and adjust my uh, either my dimensions or my scale. And if you take a look at what axis this is, you have to keep the world orientation in mind here. You can always look in the corner which direction or which one of these you need to manipulate here. There's all these little arrows that are pointing to which colors or, or which way. So I'm going to squish this down uh, on the z-axis. So I can either use scale or just change my dimensions down there. I'm going to move it up so it's kind of in line with the couch a little bit better. Now I can go back into my camera view and, and have a look and I can tweak it from there. Be close to the couch, but that's because of perspective. If I would jump up to my top view again, you see that there's a good what appears to be about a foot and a half or so with my incredible measuring skills. So we have any problems? We in good shape? to work on this table, we don't care about any of this other stuff in the room. There's a lot of other things going on here. 
Uh, if I were to look underneath this table or on top of it or on the side of it, uh, even if I move my camera, look at this, uh, now I have a big couch in my way. This isn't a very good way to work. Uh, so what we have here uh, is something called local view. Uh, and that's also on the number pad. It's a number pad forward slash with whatever you have selected. Uh, so if I want the couch in local view, I click the couch. If I want the table, which in this case I want the table, or at least the beginning of the table here, number pad slash puts this into local view. It separates everything else out from the scene. doesn't delete anything. just makes this object visible. Take a look up here. It says whatever view you're in, and then uh, in parentheses there, local. That means you're just looking at that uh, singular object. And also anything else you add from then on will also be in that local view. are going to be uh, your basic tools. Uh, we're going to be using extrusions. We're going to be using cuts or loop cuts specifically. Uh, we may be creating faces. Uh, things get out of hand. And we may be merging things. Uh, there's a keyboard shortcuts here, but remember when we get into the uh, edit mode that our tool shelf over there is also going to change. And all those guys are going to be on the tool shelf over to the right. Left. Oh, left. Sorry. No, I've got my red and blue bands again. So if I bring out my tool shelf here and I get into edit mode, see I have all these tools uh, available over here. So what we're going to do uh, is create some more surfaces to work with here. You can see that I can only manipulate these points. Whether I'm in edge mode, uh, face mode, vertex mode, really I'm only ever moving points around. So this whole object is only ever built of points. It's just if I'm in edge mode, I'm moving points around two at a time. If I'm in face mode or polygon mode, I'm moving three or more around at a time. I'm still only ever moving points. That's the whole purpose of edit mode is to move these things around and make a new shape. But if we have very limited amount of points to work with, we have a very limited amount of detail that we can create. So what we're going to do is create some more detail or more geometry to manipulate. Uh, we're going to do that by creating slices in here using the cut tool, uh, specifically loop cut. Uh, I'm going to go to the top view. So I'm just going to hit my 7 key or I'm going to go to view, say top, because uh, it's going to make measuring these cuts here a little bit easier. We're going to get out of the perspective view. Uh, even if we're in the top perspective, we're going to be fine for what we're doing, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, can everybody see these tools over here? If you can, hopefully this takes up most of the screen. If not, uh, there's a little divider in here somewhere that they can slide up and down. If you have something like that, uh, there's this little bar that can be slid up and down. You can see most of the tools there. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to do a loop, cut, and slide. So I'm going to click this button, and you see now if I roll over an edge, and you want to do this with edges, that it's going to slice this all the way around. It's going to do a loop, cut, 